no idea what the preacher said. He said, no, I'm sure the box of God learned these words instead. Go to the reflecting. My advice is free. There's a trick to Christian values, and it's compulsory. Stay frosty. That's what the preacher man said. Stay frosty. His words still bracket in my head. Can't control your future. Can't control your friends in a world without end. Stay frosty. We got selected, number something something in the top 20, I think number 15 or number 16 in the top 20 for Stay Frosty, which, let me just hide this out of the frame right down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, that's the breakfast of champions. Um, number 15 or six, is it 16? I mean, I'm eternally the optimist. I'm a permanent optimist. When I go fishing, I take a Nikon and a frying pan. Man. I send out invitations. <laughs> I start the fire before we even cast the first line. <laughs> I'm an optimist. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it was number 15 and somebody else got in the way. There was a voting error. And uh, which is so very popular in America today. Uh, I think it's number 16, and it's Stay Frosty, which clearly is the update of Ice Cream Man. Okay, just tape record everything. Mark, same thing. I don't know if we need the uh, lavalier if we're right, going right into the board for yeah. everything that's here. And good. this is instrumental to back up my uh, acceptance speech piece for 16th place for uh, this song, actually. <laughs> in honor of everybody who was uh, once again selected uh, 16th place and uh, reserved it for me. I... <laughs> A special place reserved for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Is the dog with you? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> Always kind of a, okay, you stand here, you stand there. Always seemed to have it together because back in the uh, 60s, it, the ice cream man was always a little bit left of center. It would be the hot rodder or the hipster or the musician or the surfer, particularly on the West Coast. It was the surfer who was filling in for his time because, you know, driving a... Uh, an ice cream truck, you can do it for an hour, you can do it for a day. You do it for a week, and the restrictions on those kinds of food trucks and so forth, 30, 40, 50 years ago, was next to nothing. So you had a variety of characters there you know, driving ice cream trucks. It was something like, uh, well, today, landscapers and gardening is a refined art form in Southern California, but that used to be one of the hippie things, too. If you didn't want to have a job, but you had to have a job because you had to pay for your space in the loft, then you became a gardener. And you drove a truck, you know, you got a pickup truck and a couple of lawnmowers and a couple of your buddies, and it was like fabulous furry freak brothers. And, and, and you go mow lawns. It's the essential of like being in high school, go, hey, Mrs. Johnson, need your lawn mowed. <laughs> Two dollars. Well, just take that, multiply it times. Dude, we gotta make the rent somehow because I am not moving back home. <laughs> you know what? My sister's brother drives a fucking ice cream truck, dude. <laughs> Silence. No, I mean, that's what you could do for a living, man. <laughs> and you have a Jeff Spicoli moment like Ridgemont and I go, dude. I could get so good at it, I could have a fleet of ice cream trucks. Dude. <laughs> you follow. And, uh, and so ice cream dry, ice cream truck drivers were a little bit left of center, uh, back, particularly back in the 60s. And uh, college kids would do it, you know, you work your way through school and stuff, and particularly the hippies. 
you had all kinds of borderline, you know, you'd take your hair and uh, hairspray it back so that when you were away from home or you were away from school, I went to boarding school for a little while, you'd have your hair like this. When you go wash your hair and don't put no hairspray, it comes down to here. And you can do that at an ice cream truck because there's no boss driving around with you, right? So driving in an ice cream truck was cool. It's like working in a fucking surf shop. And that was the only thing that was better, you know. And the guys, you know, would not, you wouldn't have to do anything with your hair, etc. Um, consequently, I'm your ice cream man because Pasadena was also where integrational busing started right after Alabama. They're doing a... Uh, a documentary on Muir High School right now, because that's where Jackie Robbins, the first ball player, really a black ball player, came from. And uh, I was on the buses for integrated busing. So everything that we were listening to and dancing to and grooving to was black and Spanish speaking. Yo hablo suficiente es, but no también, you all know that. And uh, man, you know, we were listening to Superfly at the prom across the street, Van Halen's were listening to The Who and Led Zeppelin, so there was always a collision of musical and, and cultural friction that resulted in really colorful interest in hybrid kind of music, a lot of hybrid arguments too. Um, nevertheless, when you, when you say, okay, well, who were your heroes growing up? What did they look like? Well, the whole moniker Diamond Dave comes from well, I was going to black high school, so it was 99% black and Spanish speaking. So I had pants up to here with suspenders. And I had, uh, you know, shoes like this, but two-tone, right? With the kind of socks that you kind of like, you could see through them a little bit. And, you know, uh, I would, you know, wear a matching jacket, whatever, and put a little shit in your hair, you know, because you know that chicks dig that and everything. And uh, they say, look at him, Diamond Dave, sparkles like a diamond. Because I would go across town to the uh, local high school, Pasadena High School, where the Van Helens were. And that was right out of Ridgemont High. That's all blue jeans and hands in your front pockets, you know, and hair down like this. And bro, have you heard the new Who album? Dude, Zeppelin. Dude, are you going to see Sabbath? Bro, are you going to Aerosmith? <laughs> And I revolved neatly between both worlds. So, if you take Superfly and you put him on the field in a football uniform in front of an ice cream truck for roughly six to eight summers in a row, what do you got? You have an adult who looks like me right now staying frosty, baby. <laughs> Like that ancient immortal said, don't want him to get you go, don't show him where it's yet. And that's just what I did. Stay frosty. Woo! Look out! Stay frosty now. Use my hand, I won't look. Growing up in my house, there was one expression that my father used routinely, and that was, stay cool. I'm not sure if he got it from West Side Story or if he had gotten it actually from the military. I never got around to asking him, stay cool, man. It's like the song in West Side Story. Do do bop it, to be to bop it. Stay cool, boy. And that was the overall, stay cool. There was, that was the empirical umbrella in our family, no matter pretty much whatever it was, stay cool. Other families had expressions like, soak it. Oh, mom, this and that, and it broke off it. Soak it. In my family, it was, stay cool. Now, my father was a surgeon. He was an eye surgeon. And uh, for the, actually the last 25 years of his career, he worked in the Ivy League prison system, Folsom and San Quentin, uh, Vacaville, Corcoran, all, all of the famous names on the West Coast. But the kind of medicine that he loved the most was emergency medicine. And he always described that to me before I was even a teenager. Emergency medicine is the most needed. It's the most necessary. It's the most where you 
will get to use all of your skills and all of your capacities, including psychological and psychiatric, your people skills, as well as your medical skills. And I never forgot that. My first job out of high school was working in surgery in Southern California. Um, I worked the night shift just on the edge of uh, South Central Los Angeles, East LA. So we had all kinds of folks coming in. There isn't any kind of surgery that I didn't assist during. This was in the very early 70s. And the first time that I heard the update of Stay Cool was when we were working on some of our boys, the Marines, who were coming back from Vietnam. This was around, well, was specifically the summer between 1972 and 1973. Stay frosty. And uh, in the music business, I can't think of a better axiom. Today, I have several tattoos. The most important is uh, right here on this hip, ready to draw at any time, is that expression in Latino script to demonstrate my Latino heritage. Did you know my mother was Mexican? Well, she's not Mexican. <laughs> it says stay frosty right here and then of course over on this side I have uh, the trace outline of a 45 caliber uh, automatic chambering pistol full size kind of a yin yang thing I do stay frosty yo A lot of kids know exactly what they want to be when they grow up from a very, very early age, rather, you know. Son of a fireman routinely wants to be a fireman. The daughter of a doctor these days wants to be a doctor. I always knew what I was going to be. I declared it at the dinner table probably before I was even seven years old. I was going to be black. And I was going to... <laughs> I'm still... I'm getting a little bit closer. Did you guys know, actually, that... Uh, uh, members of my close blood family, uh, two of my grandparents are black. Uh, actually, they're not, but uh, I've always felt they should have been. And there has been friction. This is not the place to work it out. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm not kidding though. Ever since we were standing in front of Soul Train with my sisters, I discussed that. Uh, not long ago, you know, and all the moves and in demonstrating for my sword teacher in Japan in full gear. You know, we wear the, those big pants and, you know, the big heavy top and all that stuff and everything. Going, no, 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 let me show you how the Temptations dance. I'll show you guys later in a second. The Temptations do they up on the toes and down, up on the toes and down, up on the toes and down. And then, you know, ah, look, there comes the hands. Those are Temptation hands. Why well, do you know those as Michael Jackson moves? They're not. They're from the Temptations. And uh, uh, so when you talk about ice cream, man, well, you're taking a familiar uh, icon, something that is, quote unquote, relatively harmless, and giving it a little bit of a seamy underbelly, giving it a little something, a little pencil mustache like Jimi Hendrix had, and uh, who got his idea from... Uh, uh, Little Richard, who might have gotten his, his idea from Ike Turner. These are allegations. Nothing's ever been demonstrated. <laughs> Not to anybody's lawyer's satisfaction, but you get that little pimp, that little pimp brush, like that little soul patch right there, like this. And, that's, and then <laughs> you can make it almost sinister when you go, summertime's here, baby. You need something to keep you cool. And you can give the ice cream man a whole different contrary side to it. All my feelings are guaranteed. To see the sea
So Ice Cream Man was done in very easy, simple blues style, um, but translated beautifully into when the band strikes up, and that's, you know, I don't know, West Texas, East Texas, Boogie, somewhere in Texas. And when the band strikes it up, well, that's every, you know, that's everything from uh, Savoy Brown to ZZ Top. And it was a lot of ways that we made a living doing five 45-minute sets a night. You had a choice. You're either funky, four on the floor, um, like walk this way, or what have you. Or you got, you play the boogie, you know, do ga da ga do ga da do ga da ga da which is um, closer to you know all that old school kind of rhythms and stuff that you see on that big band movies that black and white that were on Saturday mornings so you know it makes sense for the band to play that kind of material because it sounds big and fat lyrically though um we change as we grow up and i thought stay frosty is some, a sentiment that you might say to yourself not so very often as you might expect when you grow up watching hip-hop videos and you hear the expression stay frosty for example you know in these mean streets man the harsh and brutal realities of the hood etc man you got to stay frosty in fact you got to have cops eyes in new york city cops eyes I mean, you know that everybody's lying all the time. Maybe even yourself. This is the city. There's a million stories here. Mine's just one of them. My name's Roth. I was working the night watch out of juvenile. Anyway. <laughs> you have to stay frosty here. But that's kind of, you know, that's sort of expected. More often than not, in New York City, which is where I wrote the song, I wrote the music and the lyrics for this tune. You know, this is my classic flat picking, it's called. And I believe it's called flat picking because you have your hand flat over the strings and you put that little finger right on top of the board there. I'll stir it up here and then you move. You just keep your fingers there. You don't drape it across like you would in a flamenco, like so, but you keep it you know, flat picking like on a banjo. And uh, that's flat picking. And I wrote the song and started using that expression when I thought it to myself one night a bazillion summers ago. Well, I don't know if it was still the night time, but it was at about 6.30 in the morning. And this memory coincides beautifully with uh, our recent victory with Rolling Stone. <laughs> This amazing trophy for 16th place. <laughs> it, it looks a lot like a beer can, but it's not. It's a symbol <laughs> of a lot of people's hard work and effort. The first year. Because without him, you would be taking on. That's for fucking sure. Fine <laughs> white, cars you ramble, dressed in our eyes, but tie up your camel. went and visited my mom. She's in the retirement home now. God bless her. She's still, you know, fully all lucid and all there. And I had uh, given her, she was in bed, and I had given her a stereo, a little, uh, like a tape player for a cassette player. We have batteries. It has a, a radio built in AM, FM radio to put it next to her bed. And I was sitting and speaking with her, 
love her to death. And I was happened to be looking over. She was talking on the phone, and I was looking over her shoulder at this little stereo because that little stereo had quite a history in it. Um, for starters, it was the shoulder motor, I call it, because you can put it on your shoulder, and that's what compels you through the day you know, depending on what kind of shoes you're wearing at that point in your life. If you're wearing high top converse, this is what will come, this is the wind that will fill your sails coming out of the, <laughs> those speakers. If you graduated to working in the garage, well, that stereo goes up on the shelf. <laughs> And you set it to 10, 10 wins and you wait for customers. <laughs> if you're me, it sits down by Russell the dog and, you know, it plays your favorites until somebody goes, five minutes, Mr. Roth. <laughs> and whether that's a, a production manager or a defense attorney, it's either way, you bring a little stereo with you. And, it goes into the backpack, it sticks out in the edge, whatever. But more importantly, is when you ride a bicycle inner city, and you know, maybe we'll go through this at some point, you want to update the bike. What you want to do is you want to get cruiser handlebars, like at the beach, so you can sit up straight and tall. Get a big dog nose seat, looks like a dog's nose, that big mushy seat, so you're nice and comfortable sitting up taking the scenic route. And then you get the stereo, and you bungee cord the stereo onto the back of the book rack. Don't use headgear because you want to hear the bus that's about to kill you. <laughs> you want to hear, <laughs> you want to hear the uh, low rider with that killer hip hop Puerto Rican whatever the fuck it is sneaking up on you, uh, who's about to run you over because they got to make the yellow light. You understand? You want to hear the ice cream truck who's about to back into you while you're sitting there eating your bomb pop on your bicycle with one foot on the curb, hello, etc. You want to become part of the neighborhood, whatever the neighborhood is, particularly if there's traffic within inches of you. That being said, the best way to do that is to bungee cord your uh, stereo to the bike rack, uh, the book rack, rather, in the back of your seat, and then you hear the music, but you can hear all the traffic. You can hear everything that's going on around you. Um, I was living on 2nd and 17th, which is in the uh, demilitarized zone, just north of the border between downtown and uptown. Downtown is where all the action is in New York City. And uh, there were probably half a dozen strip clubs, all within simple bicycle distance uh, from where I was in my little apartment. And... Uh, at this point in time, it was summer, as I recollect, it was July and August, and this was my first time of really living in New York City. I'd just broken up with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and I was using the strip clubs like a lot of soldiers use the USO, the Officers Club or whatever. And I would ride my bike to one of the clubs, and if it was raining, for example, I would have uh, like uh, my rain suit on, or if it was snowing, uh, I would have my snow suit on, because um, uh, this went on. Once I discovered the process and the mechanism of how this all works, I did it for a whole lot more than one summer. And like it's in James Bond, when I think it's in uh, Dr. No or Thunderball, where he's in a black, one of those old black wetsuits, you know, that's really shiny, old black rubber, and he, and he comes out of the ocean and he takes it off and he's got on a tuxedo and walks into the casino. I never forgot that scene. So, you know, I would ride my bicycle, because I'm like health conscious, you know, and uh, uh, I would ride, uh, not, you know, completely, you know, that's like I, I went to Bally's Total Fitness and I said, look, I don't need to be totally fit. I'm a, I'm a rock and roller. <laughs> so, do, you, do you have like Bally's Partial Fitness? I mean, you know, because I'm not going to quit drinking or, you know, just be serious. <laughs> With that in mind, I would then 
you know, everybody likes rock and roll, you know, and all the door guys of most of the clubs of the earth. If you make your living around, you know, gym, if you're in the gym all the time, if you carry a gun to work, if you're a tough guy, or what, of course, you know, Van Halen music. Of course, you know what we do for a living, especially if you're police, military, uh, security, or whatever of any kind. If you have a confrontational hair on your bottom, you, of course, know who we are. That goes for all the gals, too, you know. We, uh, we are the uh, spirit of talking back. And um, uh, so I would deposit my bicycle. I put my, uh, you know, my rain suit, whatever, in the backpack, tip the door guy handsomely, go in and hang out with the girls. And, uh, you know, we would be, uh, I think uh, Dr. Drew would call it coupling. Um, <laughs> Or we would call it at the point at that point to hooking up, and um, I knew the routine. It didn't take me long, but I had to learn the routine. I would have to take uh, one of the girls back to her apartment so she could change and clean up or whatever. And so what we would do is uh, at two o'clock in the morning. Excuse me, four in the morning, which is in. Uh, uh, New York City, that's the drinking hours, it goes until four in the morning, um, I would, she would come out and she would get on the back of the, uh, she would sit on the stereo on the back of my bicycle and we would go through the silent empty streets, it was like a Broadway play, like something from West Side Story, silent empty, sometimes it had just stopped raining and the streets were all kind of wet and reflecting the lights, it's really silent, you know. And it has that jungleness kind of humidity and heat. It's just t-shirt weather, whatever. You have a really pretty girl sitting on the back, you know. And I remember hearing that music of because she was sitting on the speakers. And I <laughs> and as I gaze across my, my sweet mother's shoulder, her bedridden shoulder, and I look upon that stereo and I see the curvature of where the encasement for the speakers is. And I, and I reflect back as an adult now that those speakers saw more fine booty than the ladies' room toilet seat at Ford Models, arguably, for three summers in a row. Now it entertains my sweet mother. <laughs> I, I tried to actually tell her this story at some point. But uh, <laughs> I, could, I think she thinks stripper butt is actually a band at the uh, Coachella Festival this March. Which, if it isn't, it should be. And it's all as it should be. Love you, Mom. Always will, right here on The Roth Show. Stay frosty.